So I've been playing a lot of Power World lately and I'm not alone. Over 19 million players have tried Power World so far. Many players have been trying to rent dedicated servers to play in with their friends, but hosting providers can't seem to provide stable servers. Their discords are full of complaints from users saying their servers are down or constantly crashing. Why is that? In this video, we're going to break down my adventure with hosting a Power World dedicated server and do some quick math to show why hosting companies are having such a hard time hosting stable Power World servers. I had seen clips of Power World for years, and to be honest, I thought the game was likely to be a scam, similar to the day before. Then Power World came out, and it was awesome. I played for free on Game Pass, but I wanted to play with others on a dedicated server. So I asked in our community Discord who was interested in playing Power World, and one of our players recommended our first server provider. We signed up for a dedicated server rental, and things went well for the first day. Then the problem started. Power World started to explode in popularity, and our server crashed. And then it crashed again. Sometimes it would come back up quickly, but sometimes it would stay down for quite a while. My friends and I are tech people, so we knew it wouldn't take much effort for us to host the server ourselves. My good friend Solrak offered to temporarily host the server on his Linux laptop until we were able to find a permanent home. Things went great. Our server occasionally crashed, possibly due to a rumored memory leak in the Linux version of the Power World dedicated server. Luckily, Solrak is smart and wrote a script so that whenever the server crashed, it would come right back up. Additionally, we monitored the server memory and preemptively rebooted it when memory was approaching capacity. Things were great, but this was only a temporary solution. We didn't want to rely on a spare computer at someone's house. I had an active server with another hosting company. This was for my ARC server, but since nobody was playing on it, I decided to try and load Power World onto it. The performance was not great. I was constantly rubber banding and teleporting around. It was clear this company would not be our permanent home. Hearing that every hosting provider we could think of was having similar issues, we looked into renting a physical server in a data center with about 64 gigabytes of RAM. This time we set up on Windows Server as there were rumors Windows didn't have a memory leak issue. The Windows Server has been running flawlessly. Once memory hits 32 gigabytes of consumption, it stays right at 32 gigabytes consumed by Power World. Unfortunately, the 32 gigabytes remains dedicated to the Power World server even after everyone has signed off for the night. This is abnormal because you wouldn't expect an empty server to concern the same resources as a full server. And this brings us to why hosting providers are having such a hard time with Power World. The game needs at least 32 gigabytes of dedicated memory. And this is completely misaligned with how most server hosting companies do business. You see, game server hosting companies rent extremely powerful computers and resell small portions of them to their customers. Much like airlines, they assume that not everyone will be using all of the available resources at all the times. However, Power World is different. It consumes those resources, specifically memory, whether the server has active players or not. This has left some server providers scrambling. The quick fix from a server provider's standpoint would be to sell servers that have at least 32 gigabytes of dedicated memory. But is this economically feasible? Let's take a look. For this exercise, I shopped around a bit for dedicated root server rentals, and the best deal I found was approximately $150 a month for a server with 128 gigabytes of RAM. This is roughly strong enough for four Power World servers at the recommended allowance of 32 gigabytes. To break even, this would mean renting four servers for $37.50. Nitrato currently charges $39.50 for a 32 slot Power World server. This would net them $2 a month. It's just not enough to turn a profit. If we look at Indifferent Broccoli, their 32 slot Power World servers are only $24 a month, so they would lose $13.50 per game server. Now, things could be a bit different for hosting providers. Since they rent so many servers from data centers, it's likely they're getting cheaper rates than I could find. But it's unlikely to be enough of a discount to make this business model feasible. After all, who would want to pay over $60 for a dedicated server, especially if you only have four active players? So what's the long-term fix? There are a few options. Number one, game server hosts could charge way more than they are charging now and provide dedicated memory to all Power World games. Um, you know, some hosting providers already provide this functionality for some games like Minecraft. In this path, you'd expect servers to cost upwards of $60 a month. Number two, Power World can reduce the memory requirements of dedicated servers. It's clear that this is just code optimization that needs to be done. It's important to remember that this is the first release of an early access game. This is not a finished product and issues like this are to be expected. Long term, this is going to be the solution. Or option number three, game server hosts could find creative solutions. For instance, one of the providers I'm aware of is rebooting Power World servers several times a day. This is a great way to reset the memory utilization before it slowly builds back up. 
But at the end of the day, these creative solutions are probably just going to be disruptive workarounds. Well, how does any of this help you as a player? To put it simply, if you need a server running and running well, I can only think of two options. Option number one, boot up a spare PC that has at least 32 gigabytes of RAM and run a dedicated server on it. You can set up port forwarding on your router that way your friends can connect. Or option number two, you could rent hardware with at least 64 gigabytes of RAM in a data center, slap Windows Server on it, and run Pal World. This is basically what we've done, and it's been fantastic. Everything's been running great for at least a week. Just don't expect this option to be very cheap. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you everybody for watching. If you have any feedback or questions, please feel free to leave a comment on this video. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.